not anything that I conceptualized. Um, so I say that to say that as a legal profession, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for people like me, for people like you, to do some amazing, phenomenal things. But we are also a profession right now that is, in terms of diversity, we are behind every other profession. Okay, so we're behind accounting, which makes me really sad. We're behind engineering, which really surprises me. We are behind medicine. We are behind corporations. The only profession, and by profession you look at needing some kind of either a license or degree of higher education in order to enter. It, the only profession that is below lawyers in terms of diversity is civic engineers. And I'm not sure what they do exactly, but they're behind. So I wanted to just sort of set the context for that in that you've decided to enter a profession that may or may not initially fully get the gift that you're going to bring to the table. So when you talk about designing your own career, when you talk about what you want to be doing five years from now, what you want to be doing ten years from now, you have got to think about your career from the perspective of what you want and what you see for yourself, not what you already see existing in the profession. Because what you want may not currently exist, but it's not because it's not possible. It's because our profession has had a really hard time coming up into the new millennium. You know, so the basis of everything I'm going to talk about today is, um, I forgot the gentleman who, who had this quote, but it's one of my favorite quotes. If you plan a career in the legal profession, especially as a minority these days, but specifically as a minority woman these days, you have to live and plan your career out of your imagination and not out of what you see already present in the profession. You know, so I personally and a lot of people collectively are counting on you to start representing what's possible in the legal profession because it is not yet fully represented. Um, and it is I think a tragedy that our profession has lost out on so much talent. Um, I know a lot of people in the profession agree, but you know, as we sort of talk about what you want your careers to look like, um, I just want you to constantly keep that in mind. Do not look to see what is already there. If you go into a law firm, don't look to see if there's people who look like you or people that you think are like you in the partnership, because that is not a statement on what you can do. You know, if you go into a district attorney's office, a state's attorney's office, a public defender's office, don't look to see who's in leadership to see what's possible for you because it has nothing to do with what you can actually accomplish. Um, our profession is behind, and you are the leaders of what our profession can be 10 years from now, 15 years from now, and we're counting on you to do that. So, um, any questions, comments? As we go, I know it's 10 o'clock. I know you all are young and probably don't wake up fully till like 11. I remember those days. Um, mm -hmm. No question. Not really to the topic, but just what she was talking about, that our profession is behind. So we're advocates for those who you know, need this service, and there are lots of minorities and poor people who need advocates. So why do you think that our profession is behind diversity when the majority of people who need our service, not the majority, but when a lot of people who need our service, That's a really good question. Why is our profession behind when a lot of people who need our services look like us? Um, I'm, I'm, I gotta tell you a little bit about my personality first before I answer that question. I'm unnaturally candid, um, and so here goes. Um, and I work for myself, so I'm not scared of losing my job for anything that I say. Um, because the majority of the people who need our services can't afford our services. That's why there's not more people who look like us. The people who pay for lawyers uh, are not people who look like us. People who pay millions and millions and millions of dollars for legal services every year uh, are, are, are not looking for lawyers to represent them 
on basic human rights issues or civil rights issues or basic needs that they have. They're, the, the kinds of representation that they're looking for are very different. Um, so the legal profession is driven by the private sector. Um, although the majority of lawyers uh, are not lawyers in law firms, uh, the law firms do drive the legal profession. Um, they set the agenda for law schools. They set the agenda for our profession. Um, and we all know that, right? When we go to law school, uh, what do we hear most about when looking for a job is what law firm are you going to go to? Where, where, do you, where are you going to do your summer? And you've got to understand just how connected all this is, right? Because the U.S. News World Report rankings are coming out on Friday. I heard they already got leaked, so now you know it's already out there. But one of the things, one of the factors that goes into how law schools get ranked is the average starting salary of graduates coming out of law school. Okay? If everybody went into the public sector, the law school rank would actually go down, even though it might be a more laudable thing for the law school to want its graduates to do, the law school rank would go down because the average salary would go down. So law schools have an interest, um, and alumni have an interest, in seeing the majority of, of graduates go into the highest paying jobs. Those highest paying jobs have nothing to do with the people you're talking about. Okay, so law schools, law firms, the agenda is, is sort of being set. Um, and what's happening is those people that you're talking about, their legal needs are not being met. It's not that they're being met and they're being met by people who don't look like them. Um, the pressure is not there because their needs are not being met, um, which is a huge issue that anybody who is in this profession has a moral, in my opinion, a moral and ethical obligation to take a look at um, and to see what they can do to correct it. I think that corporations are getting better at asking for diversity from their law firms now. Um, political leaders are getting better at asking for diversity from the public sector. So the legal profession is moving to answer those demands, but the demands are coming from places like political leadership, like mayors of cities are saying, that city prosecutor's offices need to be more diverse. Walmart is saying, if you're going to represent us, you have to be more diverse. You know, the city of Houston is saying, if you're going to represent us in a public finance deal, you got to be more diverse. That's where the pressure is coming from, but it's not coming from the people that, you, that, that you're talking with. Um, I don't know if that helps answer your question a little bit, but the agenda is being set by people who don't look like us. So the diversity issue is more of a choice that people are making when it's convenient as opposed to an obligation that we as a profession have said we're going to meet.